Well, uh, maybe not. That's my feeling. That's why I went. Ah, uh, I don't get this. How's that, huh? Fucking not bad. happening guys we have another video on the FJ XR6 turbo build and in this box right here we have pretty much the second last piece to the puzzle for the 500 kilowatt build so without further ado let's open this box up I'm going to show you the contents and then we're going to get down and get to installing it all right so it's a pretty big box so that means it's pretty exciting stuff Got some paperwork, I need to read that as I've been warned. Got some wiring, some more wiring, some fuel fittings if you know what we're getting at. Some more fuel fittings from Speedflow. We also have a fuel pressure regulator from TurboSmart. Right there, nice. Nice little bracket. And what is all this for? All of this is for the twin pump setup. So this is a Process West kit. Not a Plazzy kit because you know, you Plasma man, joking. They've done nothing wrong. I actually run a fair few of their parts. They've just taken a lot of my money. All right, and I didn't want to give them any more putting this in, so that's why I went in Process West. Just kidding, that's what Nick did as well. But, anyway, if you're watching this, Plaza Man, sponsorship would be nice. But, um, anyway, <coughs> here she is. This is the surge kit. It has twin pumps in there already. It's all wired up. I just need to add two more pins into this wiring here for the double pump. This is a stage two kit, so it literally comes with everything. Pretty much all of the fittings are actually already fitted to the hose so I don't have to sit there and crimp anything or anything like that so I'm super excited makes the process a bit easier the car's already on the hoist I pulled half of the car apart because I needed to change the silicon hoses on the boost controller from the wastegate to silicon so we don't melt the rubber once so I'm halfway through doing that and I don't want to show you that boring stuff anyway who wants to listen and Watch to me pulling apart an airbox and stuff like that. So we're going to get down there. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to get this in the car. And then it goes off to Nick to get tuned. All right, so I've got the kit laid out on the floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up before it goes in and on its bracket there. Reading the instructions. This is the first time I've actually done it as well. Um, but yeah, skip all the boring stuff. I'll mount everything where it needs to go and then show you guys just before it goes in. All right, so uh, maybe not. I went through the kit with my boss and all the fittings are wrong for those instructions. So, I don't know, somewhere at Process where someone's put in the wrong shit, put the wrong fittings on the wrong hoses, and we're missing a single fitting, which is a 10 AN fitting with the barb on the end of it. So I have ordered one of those. It's gonna be coming tomorrow. It's just not my year this year, honestly. The club sport was one thing. I thought this was going to be my saving grace, but clearly that's causing me grief with this. It's not too big, too much of a biggie, but there is something else that I will talk about in a later video, but it's still not going to stop the car from getting tuned and whatever. But anyway, let's, um, let's drop the car down. I'll show you the fuse box that's pulled apart, and I'll show you the wire that I do have to tap in for the pumps, and we'll do the wiring, get it all ready for tomorrow. So I'll just put that barb on, put that one hose, and then bolt it up put it all together and we will be good to go to send it to Nick's. I was supplied with this wiring loom from Process West. It has a plug here that runs down to the surge itself and obviously the wiring. There's two earths there, you earth that off to the sump. And then here is where the two relays will go on the front cover there. I just gotta, you know, find a bracket, make a bracket, whatever. But these purple wires here is what's going to be splicing into that pink wire there that I just showed you. The two positives can just go off where the battery terminal goes in the fuse box, which is here, that's the main power that will go in there. They can go on there at the same time. And um, yeah, it has two earths as well, so I'll earth that out. 
probably where the factory earth is right there. So anyways, let's get into it. Let's get the wiring side of things done. I pretty much got it all wired in. As you can just see in there, the little bit of purple. Camera probably won't focus, but anyway, they're both wired up there. I've got them running through down to under here, just so the fuses are accessible. Uh, it does say in the instructions to put the bottom, like them down in the bottom here, but you know, if they blow, you kind of don't want to pull this shit apart, especially if you're stuck on the side of the road. But anyway, I'm going to push this down, clip everything back in. Um, they're the relays there, so maybe I'll kind of leave them hanging. Maybe I'll try and get a bracket tomorrow and get that sitting clean there, but I won't put apart, I won't put the airbox back together, sorry, um, just so in case I find something. But anyway, we're pretty much there. Then it's just a matter of running the wiring, but. We'll get back to that, I'll do that, and I'll show you where I've run that wiring. All tucked up there, nice and beautifully, along the factory starter positive wire that goes from the battery in the fuse box. Pretty much all runs up to there. The uh, surge tank bolts off this 24 of the cross member and sits roughly about here and up. So I may have to fold the plug and push it up there, but we'll work that out tomorrow once it's in, because like I said, waiting for that fitting. But um, let's leave it here and come back in the morning. All right, so it's all finally set up. We got the missing piece to the puzzle. So now it's ready to put in. Just gonna undo a few things and work her in. I'm not gonna show you guys, just, it's just boring stuff. So let's get her in and let's plumb her all up. She is all in and pretty much ready to go. What a mission this was to get that in there, line it up, plumb everything up, especially with the wrong fittings, but we made it work. We got the uh, pressure gauge here on because we do have to set the fuel pressure reg at 50 or 58, I believe. Um, but yeah, that'll be getting done first thing in the morning because we do have to swap one more over, but I'm gonna drop it down and show you what I did with the wiring and pretty much we will conclude it once I get the fuel pressure reg going and the car is running. Now I thought I would show you guys this before I put the pod filter back on and the cover but the two relays here did not come with those tabs, so we have to seal them off another one. Anyway, they're screwed in there, they're nice and secure, they're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how neat or anything this is because literally the cover will cover the whole thing here. So that part of it's done. We've got the 10 mil here with the Allen key, that's how you adjust fuel pressure regulator, which is down there if it will focus, which it probably won't because it's pretty dark in there, but anyway. That will get adjusted on idle and then the rest will get done in the tune. Today is finally the day I just got a call from Nick telling me to bring down the FG to put it on the dyno and get it tuned. So I'm super keen. We are finally here. After the last few speed humps, this felt like we just weren't going to reach it this year, but we are here. As you would have seen, the twin pump set up. Man, what a hassle. Anyway, they ended up getting sorted out. Huge shout out to my boss, Peter, for doing that. He didn't have to, but he did. So huge shout out to you, Pete. And the GJ drive lines tail shaft. Man, the center bearing was shot on the first one he sent out. Had dramas on getting a second one. Finally got a second one. And it is completely wrong. So Nick spent till 11 p.m. last night dissecting it and making two shafts into one. So it all works, no vibrations. I've taken it for a little drive. So it is finally tune time. I'm going to take it to Nick's. I'm not gonna to get too much footage of putting it on the dyno and whatnot because I don't wanna be in his face too much. I wanna let him do what he has to do. It's his last day of work. Don't wanna be in his face. I don't wanna annoy him and whatever. Um, but I'll try to get the best footage that I possibly can. And yeah, I'm just super keen. What we're gonna be doing is a PCM Tech multi-tune. So I have three tunes on 98, three tunes on E85. As to what it will make in 98 and what it'll make in E85, I'm not entirely sure because my 1250cc injectors did not come in time, unfortunately. But the car does have 800cc sonic injectors, I have been told. So I'm gonna try and max that out. And then in the new year when my injectors come, we'll whack them in, run it back up on the dyno and see what it makes. But as to what it will make today, I got no idea, so you're gonna have to wait and see in this video, because, man, if it makes a 500 kilowatts, I'm stoked. If it makes close to it, I'm stoked. But like I said, the injectors may be the thing holding us back, but time will tell. So I'm gonna stop talking. Let's head down to Nick's. Let's get this thing run up on the dyno.
in Tycos. <laughs> So there we have it fellas it made some fucking numbers man holy shit i was not expecting that at all he actually told me 650 horsepower max with those injectors and we went above and freaking beyond that so i'm super stoked with it so with the 98 side obviously three tunes there and the ghost cams so the first tune was just a low boost setting mid was a mid boost setting and then the highest boost setting we got 434 kilowatts which is 582 horsepower not bad for 98 i must say anyway so then we got into the 85 tune i didn't put all of them in because i didn't want to bore you guys too much i just wanted to give you the big numbers there but tune one 510 kilowatts which is 685 horsepower so we got over that 500 kilowatt mark Holy hell, I'm absolutely stoked. So tune two, 534 kilowatts, which is 716 horsepower. And tune three being the 577 kilowatts, which is 774 horsepower. Man, I am absolutely over the moon with that. And that was only at about 23 PSI. So we're, we are really not pushing this motor, really not pushing the bottom end because they can handle up to about 30 pound with ease. So once we get those injectors in, who knows? I think we're gonna see that 800 mark, maybe that 600 kilowatt mark. I guess we'll have to wait and see because there is plenty more content coming out on this. But I am going to leave this video here in the next one. I'm gonna give you some pulls. I'm gonna give you some drive-bys. I'm gonna give you some draggy info. And we're gonna be going to the drags with it the second that the drag strip opens up. Whack the radials on, do some times, have some fun, plenty more content to come. I appreciate love and support as always. Thank you guys for watching this build series and supporting me and this channel. You mean the absolute world to me. I cannot thank you guys enough. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification button so you do not miss out on the next one because I guarantee you, you will not want to miss that. And as always guys, we'll catch you in the next one.